Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today we're going to dive into the newly improved splitter tool. If you're a Studio One professional user and you upgraded to 5.2 that came out recently, you might have noticed a new plugin in your plugin list called Splitter. Now, Splitter itself isn't a new feature, but it acting more as a plugin is. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Before, let's say we had a channel we wanted to do some sort of parallel processing on. We could put a compressor on there, and then we could use the mix knob, but if we wanted to use a different compressor, a third-party compressor, uh, or we wanted to do some interesting routing within that channel, we would click on this routing tab, and now we could add in a splitter and do all sorts of interesting, crazy things inside of that channel. The problem was if we closed that out and looked at our console, we couldn't tell which channels had splitter and which ones didn't, which caused some confusion because you had to remember that there was a splitter on this channel. Not the best workflow. We fixed that with version 5.2. As you can see, we can now see the splitter tool here and we can even see some of the things that are happening on the splitter without opening it up. So let me explore. We're going to just take some time in this video to explore splitter. Uh, splitter itself isn't new, but it's, like I said, one of those things that's been kind of hidden and it could be a really valuable asset to your mixing workflow, even your production and creativity workflow because of all the cool things you can do. It's a simple tool, but it's super powerful. So let me show you some examples of what the splitter tool can do. But first, let's just go on a quick tour of splitter. So let me just grab splitter and put it on this vocal channel. So when you first pull it in, it looks like this. We've got, uh, you can see this vertical line is our signal flow from top to bottom. This is the signal flowing through this channel. Now, if we want things like EQ and compression in here, we can just drag those in. There's an EQ, there's a compressor, right? And this just is just normal. The signal's going through the EQ and then through the compressor, right? It's a, it's a serial process. It goes through one, then goes through the other. But what if we wanted to do some sort of split processing where we wanted to EQ it and compress it, but not have the EQ prior to the compressor, but also not have the compressor prior to the EQ. We want to run the signal through both at the same time and then bring them back together as a single piece of audio. Well, you can do that with Splitter. Uh, so here, if you click on Splitter, you'll see a number of things show up here on the left. There's a lot of powerful features. You can alternate this. You can change it up quite a bit and get some really cool results. Uh, the first thing is the number of splits. It defaults to two, which is kind of the normal way you would want to work, but you could have three splits or as many as, I'm not sure the maximum because I've not gone that far, but as you can see, you can go nuts with this. This is great for sound design. If you want to run a single piece of audio through multiple different processors, but independent of one another, you can do that with Splitter. The other big thing to pay attention to is this split mode right here. This allows me to change how the splitter behaves. Normal mode, it's just, it's literally like a malt box in a studio where it's taking the signal and just sending it in multiple places as one, at once. Almost like a send, but it's all within the same channel. So it's splitting it equally across however many splits that you have. The entire signal from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is going down each uh, each side of the split, okay? So right now the signal is going equally through the compressor and the EQ. If we do channel split, now it is going left and right. Channel meaning stereo channel. The left side, so right now this EQ would be EQing only the left channel and this compressor would be only compressing the right channel. This is great for if you want to EQ the left and right differently or if you want to do mid side processing where you put, uh, I'll show you that in a second, you can have the mids on the left and the sides on the right and you can EQ and compress those differently. Really great for mastering. Uh, and then finally, frequency split allows you to create sort of a multi-band situation. So as I slide this frequency knob, everything below this cutoff point, so everything below 376, will go through this side, and everything above will go through this one. This is a place where maybe you want to have just three splits. So you can do kind of a low, mid, and high treatment, where the lows are like everything below 160, the mids are up to like 2.5K, and then the highs are there. So now we've got low, mids, and highs, and we can put different plugins in each of those places. Now, I, ar I would argue you can go nuts with this if you want, and by all means, maybe you should just to kind of run it through its paces. But you can also, I would recommend keeping it simple at first because even the simplest little tweaks can be really powerful. And then if you want to build out huge, amazing effects chains using Splitter, please let us know. And you can actually share those with other users using our cloud feature, but we'll talk about that another day. A couple of other things to note about this. If you click in any of these spots here on 
the splitter just above your first plug-in you'll see a, like a disconnection happen like in a like a diagram electronics diagram it's not connected and you click it again it is connected so you can mute different sections of your split so you can just monitor certain ones without hearing the others you can also do that by clicking these mute buttons here as you can see they correspond to clicking right here and then levels you may have seen there's a tiny little fader available at the end of each split so if you're doing parallel processing and you've got this killer distortion on one side of a vocal, but you don't want it as loud as it is, you can just pull that down here by adjusting these little faders. There are also sliders here that do the exact same thing. And if you're looking inside the channel itself, you can actually do that same adjustment from right here without even opening up the splitter. That's pretty great. So that's the overall tour of what's in Splitter. It's fairly simple, but as you can see, you can go nuts and get some pretty powerful results here. Now let me show you a few examples of each of these settings. One of the most common things you'll use Splitter for is parallel processing, of course. Let me show you a different example from the parallel compression video that I did recently. So let's drag Splitter onto this vocal track, and here's what we're listening to. And I never was much of a fighter. So just two vocals, a vocal and a harmony, already mixed, but we want to like mess with it a little bit. So I've got Splitter here. Let's drag in everyone's favorite plugin, Red Light Distortion, which if you haven't seen my video on that, it's pretty fun. And let's put that on the right hand side. So we've got a regular split, as we can see here. It is a normal split. We got distortion on one side. If we just crank it up a little bit, we should now hear clean vocal, and then also on top of that, the distorted vocal. And I never was much of a fighter. And I never was. Disgusting. So now if I mute the side, or the right side, you'll just hear the clean vocal. And I never was. And if I mute the other side, we'll just hear the distortion. And I never was. Now the distortion to my ear is a little bit loud. So let's pull this fader down and let's just take a listen and see what we got. And I never was much of a fighter. And I never was. Now what we can do, we can say, mm, that red light distortion is a little thicker than I want. I'd like to EQ just the distorted side. Well, there's a number of ways to do that. Can you think of a couple? <laughs> this feels like one of those kids shows. Can you think of one? You're right, we can use an EQ. Uh, we could also use a different type of split if we want. But for this example, we'll just put an EQ after the distortion and we'll say, you know what, don't, don't give me none of that low end. I don't want it to be disgusting down there. So now we've just EQ'd the distorted signal, not the dry signal. So the dry signal still sounds the same. And I never was. But then if we turn on the distorted signal and just listen to that by itself. There's not as much low end there as there was before. And I never was. We can actually make that even more dramatic by just rolling it up to like there. Let's take a listen to that. And, I never was. and now maybe it's a little too quiet, so we can bring up that volume again here. Doodle -a -doodle -a -doo. and I never was. Yeah, crunchy, thin, gross, but you add it with the main vocal. And I never much of a fighter. And then if you're thinking, mm, I want to check and see if that distortion is introducing any sort of like phase issues or something like that, which sometimes happens with distortion because it's kind of unpredictable, you could add mix tool here in the chain and we could just select the invert left, invert right. So it's a stereo channel. And we can just turn that on and off and see which way sounds better. And I never was much of a fighter. And I never was. Retain some warmth when we do that mix tool flip. So distortion is one of those things that can mess things up in a cool way. And sometimes if you flip the polarity, it can just it just emphasizes different frequencies. So that could be a cool effects chain. So now let's say you really like this and you want to save this as an overall effects chain. You can. You could even go nuts and say, I want my mix tool blue, my distortion red, and my pro EQ green, and my splitter purple like you, you can go nuts with it i never do but that does kind of look nice then we can just come back out to this channel let's close this out and we can save this whole thing this whole cool thing we just created as an effects chain so if we click on here whoop, sorry click here we can go down to the bottom and say store effects chain and we can call this cool splitter distortion 
and that will save over in my list of effects chains, which we can obviously organize by folder, but where is it? Right there. So now if I drag this, let's say we accidentally, you know, our, our kid comes in and destroys everything, because you know, sometimes kids don't realize that if they click remove all that it ruins everything, we can come over here and say, ha ha, you can't beat me child. And we drag this on and bam, we've got everything there with the split engaged. So now you can create these cool moments with all this crazy routing, then just save it as an effects chain and pull it into any other session in the future. So what you can do is you'll start collecting these cool collections of pretty intense different routing situations. You create them once, you can reuse them over and over again. And as always, if I'm not sure if there's a splitter on this channel, bam, there's a splitter on this channel because it says splitter on this channel. All right, real quick, let me show you frequency split because that's something different and pretty cool. I've seen Gregor do this before. Uh, let's change this splitter to a frequency split where it's, let's just say, just keep it simple. Everything below 350 is on the left-hand side. Everything above is on the right. So the left-hand side sounds like this. Right-hand side sounds like this. And I never would. Let's actually make that even higher. Let's get up here. Get no warmth on that right-hand side. And, I never was. and then if we mute bypass both or listen to both, it's just the normal vocal. So let's say we want to put some reverb and delay on this, but instead of using a send, let's say we want to put it on the channel itself for whatever reason. Maybe that's you're setting up for a show on the show page and that's just an easier setup for you. I don't care what your reasons are, but let's drag in a plate reverb, my favorite, onto the right hand side. And let's also add a delay, analog delay. And let's do this, instead of sending them together, let's add another splitter here. This will be a normal split, and we'll have the delay on one side and the room reverb on the other. And then each of these will be set to not super, yeah, the mix knob so we get some of the dry signal through. But just setting that up without doing anything, as you can see, we've got two splitters on this channel. Let's take a look at what we've got. Let's just hit play and just see what happens. And I never was much of a fighter. So to recap, here's what we've done. We've split the signal once into lows and highs, basically. On the high channel, we split that, so we've got a delay and a reverb, but the delay is not feeding the reverb, and the reverb is not feeding the delay. They're both coming through separately, and they're not getting muddy because we've only sent higher frequencies to those. It's the equivalent of doing a send to a delay, doing another send to a reverb, using EQs on each of those to make sure there's no low end, which is the way I normally work. This is a cool approach that I could just drag right onto a vocal bus and I go from, you know, sounding like this, nice and dry, and I never was. to sounding like this with some delay and some reverb and no extra muddiness. And I never was. Much of a fighter And I never was Much of a Now I'd like some more reverb there because we've got it there. Let's do this. Let's bring the mix knob up and let's make this like a five second reverb just for giggles. And I never was Much of a fighter And I never was Much of a fighter I love that because now my, my delay doesn't go into the reverb and kind of make things a little too complicated and my reverb doesn't go into the delay, but it's all baked into one channel. You could save this as a, an effects chain and have it on an effects bus, send things to it, but then you know you're getting some reverb and some delay split out. Guitar players. Huh. You can do this, you may have seen some videos I've done on using Ampire as your guitar rig. You can do this where you send, <clears throat> imagine setting up a pedal board where you've got a nice reverb on one side and a delay on the other, and then they join back together. It's hard to do in the analog world, but here on this system, you could just record a clean guitar, just your basic guitar tone, and then use this with a splitter to send, get crazy cool ambient wide stereo sounds, split the plugins exactly how you want them. The, the possibilities, as cheesy as it sounds, are literally endless. And I've just used 
Compression, EQ, delay, and reverb. You've got all the other plugins in our collection, and you've got things like um, all your third-party plugins that you can add in. Suddenly, you can have a compressor just on the mid-frequencies, your favorite compressor, and another compressor just on the highs. That gets a little crazy, but it's possible. Okay, I'll make a note to show you mid-side in its own video because it's complicated, and this video is already getting a little bit long. One other thing I want to show you, and I haven't even tested this, so we're doing this together, is what if we use the splitter, frequency split, on guitar tracks with a tremolo. And we could just have tremolo on the high frequencies. I've never done that, let's try it out. Here's the guitar parts. And if you're not familiar, we've got a plugin in Studio One that's been around for ages called X-Trem. X-Trem. Um, and it sounds like your typical uh, tremolo. By the way, fun fact, this will also do panning if you flip the mode. Now, instead of just volume, it's panning left and right that goes crazy. Makes you dizzy, but it can be kind of cool, um, depending on the situation. So, that's a cool tremolo sound. But I don't want it to take over the entire signal, maybe just the higher frequencies, so my, my warmth doesn't go up and down and kind of make me feel like I'm seasick. So let's grab Splitter Tool, drag it onto this track, and let's open it up and let's put X trim on the right hand side. And then let's turn this into a frequency split. And let's just tremolo the highs. Let's check that out. Okay, now what could that sound like with everything, listening to everything? Do you get what that's doing? Listen to the difference between, so that version, if I just move the tremolo here, check it out. See how the high frequency stayed the same, wah, 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 but the lows, the woo, 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 it stopped being that woo, 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 and it just was woo, woo, woo. And so we were able to affect both just using a simple splitter tool and a tremolo. Hopefully, this has gotten you excited to try stuff like this out. I don't, granted, I don't sit here and play on everyone else's software all day, but I don't know of anybody doing something like this, and Splitter has just gotten a lot better with version 5.2. If you're a version 5 user, this is a free upgrade. Go into your account, oh, go to the start page. There will be a green button here that says upgrade, or you can go check for updates, and you can click that button, download it, and you'll have this sitting there waiting for you to make something awesome. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.